Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just worship the Lord this evening. Let's just give him a high note of praise because he is worthy of all glory, worthy of all honor, worthy of all praise. Father God, we just want to thank you, God, because, Lord, of who you are. We thank you, God, that you are the every, everything that we ever need, oh God, we can find in you. Father, you are the I am that I am. Everything, oh God, that we desire, Lord, is found in you. We thank you, oh God, that you have protected us through the course of this day. That, Lord, you have been with us, O oh God, from since a child, O oh God. And we thank you, O oh God, for loving us, O oh God, for protecting us, for guiding us, O oh God, for speaking to us, Lord, for holding us in times of difficulty, O oh God. Father, we ask tonight, O oh God, that you take all the honor and glory and praise that is due unto your holy and matchless name, O oh God. We worship you, O oh God, and we lift you high, O oh God, because there is no other God like you. And, Father, we thank you, O oh God, because you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are a champion, a reigning champion, O oh God. You said, O oh God, that you will contend with them that contend with us. You will fight with them that fight with us, O oh God. You said that we are the apple of your eyes, O oh God. Your love for us, O oh God, is unmeasurable, O oh God. Father, we thank you this evening, O oh God, for such a great and wonderful love, for such a great and wonderful Father as you, O oh God. We praise you, Lord. We ask, Lord, those on the way you hasten their footsteps, that they will come and hear from you tonight, O oh God. Those that are here, O oh God, we pray, Lord, that you will touch them, O oh God. Open their understanding, Lord, that they will receive from you tonight, Lord. Father, whatever is about to be said and done, let it be said and done for the honor and the glory of your kingdom, O oh God, that your name, Lord, will be glorified. In everything we say, Lord, take all the honor and the praise and the glory. We give you thanks, Lord. We pray, Lord, for Apostle Kenneth, O oh God. We ask, Lord, that you touch him right now where he is, O oh God. And we ask, Lord, that you make a way where there seems to be no way. Father, every door that is standing before him, O oh God, we pray, Lord, that you open it in the name of Jesus. Father, everything, O oh God, that wants to hinder his progress, Lord, we come against it right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for that mighty man of war, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for that mighty man, O oh God, you have given to us, Lord, to hear from you, Lord. Father, we just worship you and we thank you tonight. We pray, O oh God, that you bless those that are online viewing, God. And we ask, Lord, that you take control of everything. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's declare a covenant scripture this, this evening. And it's taken from Joshua 1.5. And it says, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Joshua 1 and verse 5. And our declaration scripture for the year of 2022. And it's taken from John chapter 1 and verse 16. And it says that of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. We just want to give God thanks and honor and glory for his word. He said of his fullness we have all received and grace for grace of God's fullness and we know that he fill it all in all. Everything that we ever need God has provided. Hallelujah. Father we just want to worship you Lord. We just want to glorify your name Lord. We just want to lift you up Lord and we just want to say we love you. We love you, Lord. Take joy, Lord, in what you hear this evening, Lord. Let it be a sweet sound in your ear, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to soul 
Rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you All that I adore 
is in you. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. And I live for you alone. Every breath that I take and every moment I'm awake. Lord, have your way in me. My heart, I give you my soul, and I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, and every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. This is my hallelujah to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. within me I give you praise all that I adore is in you Lord I give you my heart I give you my I give you my soul, and I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, and every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. Lord, have Hallelujah. Father, we just want to honor you, O oh God. We ask, O oh God, that you have your way in our lives, Lord. Every breath that we take, O oh God, every moment that we are awake, Lord, have your way in us, O oh God. We give you full control of everything in our lives, O oh God. Lord, our minds, our heart, our soul, O oh God, every decision that we make, O oh God. Father, O oh God, everything in our heart, O oh God, we give you control. We relinquish, hold on it, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We surrender everything to you, O oh God, withholding nothing, O oh God. And we ask, O oh God, that you just take control. You have your way, O oh God. Father, you do what no one else can do, O oh God. Because you, can, you alone can do what no man can do. Father, you said the arm of flesh will fail, O oh God. But you, Lord, never fail. We thank you, O oh God, that you have never failed us. You have never forsaken us, O oh God. And we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may all have your seats tonight. Hallelujah. 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 We just want to give God thanks for all that he has done. You know, the Bible says, don't be weary in well-doing. Don't, be, don't give up. Don't be weary. Don't get tired in doing what is right. Don't get tired in worshiping God. Don't get tired in praising the Lord. Don't get tired in doing what he has called you to do. Because God is, not, God is no man's debtor. He will reward you. You will not work for God for nothing. God rewards those that diligently seek him. Amen? Hallelujah. How many of you all believe that this evening? 
Hallelujah. God is a good God. He's an awesome God. He's mighty. There is no amount of words we could possibly say to really proclaim his greatness to us. Hallelujah. Tonight we're going to just talk briefly about a prepared heart. Now when we talk about heart, we're not talking about the beating flesh in our chest. When we talk about the word heart, we're talking about our will, our emotions, our everything, our existence, everything that makes up us. Right? The way we think, the way we move, everything. We have to have a prepared heart before the Lord. You just can't come any, any, anyhow before God. If we could have come anyhow before the Lord, then back in the olden days, people wouldn't die the way they were dying. The, the priests wouldn't have to wear all those things to go into the Holy of Holies. He didn't have to wear no, no rope around his waist to go into the Holy of Holies if you could have just gone in just like that. But we thank God for the mercy seat of Christ. We thank God that even in our sin, God can still hear when we call and we ask for help and repentance. Amen? So there is a way that you have to come before the Lord. There is a way. You don't just come. Yes, he said, come boldly before the throne of grace. But how can you go before the throne of grace with dirt on your clothes? If you are going before a king, you dress properly. An earthly king. You don't go any and anyhow before an earthly king. So why go before the king of kings and the lord of lords any old how? You know, we had this song we used to sing, um, this old hymn, Just as I am without one plea, but that the, the blood was shed for me. Yes, but you don't stay in that state. As you are, you come to God, but you don't stay there. You move on. Amen. So tonight we're going to talk about a prepared heart. And I pray that God blesses you this evening. Amen. What is preparation? When we say a prepared heart, what does it mean to prepare? We have mostly have ladies here with the exception of one gentleman here. But we ladies know that when we have to prepare something home, the husband or the children or whatever, we have to prepare food for them. We all know what it means. You just go inside the, the cupboard, pull out a, a pack of macaroni and throw it in the water with all the water boiling and all of these things and you're going to make macaroni pan. You, can't ha you have no eggs and you have to run in the shop to buy egg while the macaroni on the stove. You don't do those things. You don't put the, 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 the cart before the horse. There is a way and a method that you do everything that you be efficient in the kitchen, in the home. You don't do things haphazardly. And if you do do things haphazardly, change. God is calling for excellence. He's not calling for, for um, things to be done any old how. Amen? So what is preparation? Preparation is the act or the action or process of preparing or being prepared for use or consideration. Being prepared for use or consideration. Putting something together. To prepare means to put something together. When we're preparing lunch, we put something together. We take out the, the, the onions, we take out the garlic, we take out whatever. We have to chunk the pot with and do whatever and whatever. We take it out, we prepare the food before. Right? And some people go as far, some ladies go as far as chopping up everything on the weekend. So during the course of the week, it's just a drop in the pot. We busy ladies, right? So preparation, we think about what we have to do. We know what we want to do and how to get it done. But we think about, okay, I'll do this first, do this, do this, do this. When you're making soup, you don't put the... I, I had to learn the hard way when I was learning to cook. When you're making soup, you don't put the soft things first to boil and then the hard things after. You put the hard thing first to boil and when you reach a certain stage and you start dropping things in, right? Or else the food will be raw. <laughs> like I say, I learned it the hard way. That's when I, back in the days when I was now learning to cook. So we are talking about preparation. If we do this in the physical, there must also be preparation when we go into the spiritual. When you go before God, you don't just walk in and before God and start to demand stuff. Yet there is a way. And if you have gone through foundation Bible school, you would have known that there are ways to approach the throne of grace. You go with thanksgiving, you go with praise, you go with worship, you go with supplication. There are different methods of going before the throne of grace. But you just don't go all of a sudden and start demanding. Yes, you are a son and a daughter, but you just don't go and demand. There is a way. You have to prepare your heart before you go there. Amen? All right, so we see that preparation is to put things together, to get things ready, to make things ready by grooming or discipline. And you know, we don't like to hear the word Discipline. But discipline and disciple is very close together. If you have to be a disciple of Christ, 
And if you want to be a disciple of Christ, you must be disciplined. That is one of the first things that you have to do. You must be disciplined. We all like to discipline our children. If we don't discipline our children, what will happen? Exactly, chaos. They will shame you when you go outside. You can't carry them nowhere. They will put you to shame. And nobody wants to be put to shame. So we discipline our children because we do not want that shame to our reproach to come on us. It's the same way you discipline your spirit before you go before the Lord. You discipline yourself by prayer and fasting. Fasting is not an absten uh, uh, only staying away from food. Fasting is subjecting, putting your body under subjection, that your spirit takes rule. That is what fasting is. So when they call for fasting, they'll say, okay, I'm not going to eat. And you're only thinking, and the more you, you say you're going to fast, the more you think about food. No, that's not the way. Think about it. Change the way that you think. Fasting is putting the body under so that the spirit man will be strengthened. If we constantly feed the, the, the physical man all the time and eat, 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 eat all the, all the time and not see about our souls, we would not have balance. We would not have balance. Amen. So you see that the heart is the prayer altar. Without a right heart, prayers cannot be answered. Prayers are not answered. The heart is the prayer altar. It's in our heart that we pray. Yes, we may say it out loud, but we formulate the words in our heart, what we want to say to, to God. When we have to do worship, when we go into deep worship, it's a heart matter. It's a matter of the heart. Heart is the heart is a prayer altar. Without a right heart, prayers are not answered. So with that, we see that there is a right heart and a wrong heart, right? A right type of heart and a wrong type of heart. Let's look at Psalm 66 and verse 18. Psalm 66 and verse 18. I promise you I would not take much of your time today. It says, if I had enjoyed having sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. This is the New International Reader's Vision. The King James Version says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I regard iniquity in my heart, or what the word regard means is to pay attention to the iniquity in my heart. God is not going to hear me. If I like the thing that I'm doing wrong, and I don't want to change, and don't want to give it up, God is not going to hear me. Coming to God and saying, Lord, I'm sorry, but you're not sorry is making is, is wasting time. Because God knows your heart more than you. He says, if I enjoyed having sin in my heart. You know what put it? If I have enjoyed having sin. You know something? Sin sweet, you know. I ain't going to lie to you. The sin sweet. It's so much easier because you don't have to, you don't have to, 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 to fight with yourself to do it, you know. It's a natural instinct. It's a natural instinct to sin, a natural instinct to lie, to cover up, to compromise, a natural instinct to want to covet something else, a natural instinct. But when we, when we serve God, when we give our hearts to the Lord and we serve the Lord, it's a deep fight that we have to, 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 to lay aside those things, those, those sins, the things that so easily beset us as the word of God says. It's always a fight down. And you wonder, well, bet, some people say better to stay in the world. <laughs> <laughs> because in the world it was easier. It wasn't easier. It was just natural to do that. God didn't call you to be a natural person. You are a supernatural being. Amen? You are a supernatural being. So let's see. It says, if I had enjoyed having sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. Now look where the place of sin was in the heart. A person on the outside looking at you cannot see your heart. Those things are something that you have hidden inside of you. You could come here. You could come to church. You could go to church. And you could fool everybody around you. Fool every single person around you. People could think it's a super spiritual person. Speaking in tongues and everything. And, and everything. They're doing everything. Because you know the walk. You know the talk. Because you're in church for years. So after a while it becomes, it becomes second nature for you to do the things. Pray, praise. As soon as they say praise, you don't start already. And sometimes it's just emotion and nothing behind it. God sees your heart. You could fool everybody else, but you cannot fool God. And you all need to understand that you cannot fool God. If I had enjoyed sin in my heart, 
the Lord would not hear. So don't think you can hold on to the outside world and do the thing during the week and do the thing just before service and whatever. And then come here and want to praise God and say, God know my heart. And God, that is how I is. Do God know my heart and you go here, my friend? No. The word of God says, if you have enjoyed having sin in your heart, the Lord is not going to hear you. He's not going to listen until you are ready to change and do a genuine turnaround. A genuine letting go of stuff and not taking it back up. Until you don't decide for yourself, listen, I'm going on the wrong way. I need to change my life. Because I'm doing the same thing over and over and over and I'm not seeing anything progressing. I'm not, so why continue doing it? Do they make a change? Ask the Lord to help you. Ask the Lord to help you. So we see here that God will not hear you if your heart is not right. So pr the heart is the prayer altar. And without a right heart, your prayers, no matter how genuine you might feel, if your heart is not right, God is not going to hear you. There is a way. The, 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 the book of Psalms said, create in me a clean heart. A clean heart. So, so am I to take out, cut up my chest, take out my heart and wash it with soap and water and put it back in? Those kind of things only happen in cartoon. Do happen in real life. So how do I clean my heart? Creating me a clean heart. The word of God says a broken spirit and a contrite heart he will not despise. A heart that is broken because of sin. A heart that is broken and ready to change. God is not going to despise. And God knows when you make it, when you're playing the fool and he knows when you're serious. So you could fool, you could snap, could run out your nose and your eye and all kind of thing, yamp you fall out your eye and all kind of thing while you're crying and thing and you can't catch yourself. But if your heart is not right, if it's not genuine, God is not going to hear you. You're wasting your time. You're just making yourself look ugly. Amen? So let's continue. So what is the soul made up of? When we use the word heart and soul, it, it, it could interchange, right? So what is the soul made up of? It is a seat. If we go to, if we were in Foundation Bible School, and I encourage you to be in it, you would know that the soul is a seat of reasoning, of will, and of emotion. So the heart and the soul, the seat of reasoning, how you think about things, how you reason out things, how you, how you, you lay it out, how you look at things, how you perceive things, your reasoning, your will, the determination that you have to do something, whether you change or not, and your emotion. And you know there's a funny thing, that emotion. That emotion could kill you, you know. That emotion could steer you wrong, 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 wrong. If you listen to emotions rather than faith in God, have faith in God, you will go down the wrong road. Because you, 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 you feel, I feel, the, the, I feel the vibes, so the Spirit of God wasn't moving today. I feel the, 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 the goosebumps on my hand, so the Spirit of God was moving today. I don't like when she preached that, nah? because I just can't feel the Spirit. The Spirit, is not, the Spirit is not by feeling. The Spirit is by faith in God. Because you could get goosebumps because the AC is too cold. You could get goosebumps because, you know, sometimes you just get this kind of thing that's run down your spine. I forget what it's called. A cold finger that's run down your spine. Right. That could happen because of your nerves. You could forget to take your tablet or take a tablet and something, you feel a kind of way. That is why some of the prescriptions, when you look at, when you look at cable, especially when you look at cable and they, they, they bring out a new drug and they're telling you this and that and they, they're giving you the, all these symptoms of what could happen and in some cases death. You might get depression and you might get this and you might get that. Why? Because you're taking a tablet that messing with your emotions, your chem the chemicals in your body that have it off balance. So your emotions go on crazy. So now if you take on that, you go say, well, what you go do? You understand? So we cannot go by feelings. Emotions is a killer. God make emotions. Because when God designed the body, he designed the body the way that he is. Because the word of God said in Genesis, after his image and after his likeness, and we have seen in the Bible that God has emotions, but God is not ruled by his emotions. Because if God was ruled by his emotions, he would never kill anybody. He wouldn't have nothing like hell or anything like that. Everybody going to heaven. Whether you kill three million people on the earth here and do genocide or whatever, you're going to heaven. But that is not the case. God has emotion because in the word of God, he, was, he had anger. When you see the children of Israel keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and would not change. 
the anger of God, the Bible said the anger of God was kindled against them. So God have anger. God, have, God is a God of love and love is an emotion. So God has emotions just like you and I. But the difference is he is not ruled by it and we are, ought not to be ruled by it either. Right? We had to talk about emotions if we are talking about the heart. So we see that thoughts, words, and deeds are all products of the mind. Thought, word, and deed. You know the word, you know sometimes you hear you're sinning thought, word, and deed? You're sinning thought, word, and deed. The, the thoughts become words, the words become actions. Be careful what you think. Because you may be, you may, you may have a bad feeling towards somebody and you say, if she only tell me anything again, I go lick she down. So the thought became words and next thing you know, the girl says something or the man says something and whap the gas clap. Because it was already planted here and the seed took root. Be careful what you think about. Amen? So we see thought, word, and these are all products of the mind. So if they, they are products of the mind, you know, we, our mind could change real rapidly. As fast as the breeze blows, somebody's mind could change. So sometimes we must, sometimes our minds are wrong. Sometimes our mind right and sometimes we, our mind is wrong. As in Proverbs 14, 12. Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. It might seem right to you what you're doing. It might seem right to you. I could stay home and watch church online while you're well capable of coming to church and being together because the word of God says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together as a man of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as we see the day approaching. And what day is he talking about? The judgment day of Christ. Amen? So sometimes your minds are wrong. If your mind is not is not led by God or the Spirit of God, you're wrong. And this is what is going to happen to you. There's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end are the ways of death. How many times we make the wrong decision because it looked good to us, but when we lower down the road, we catch yourself in trouble. There is a way that seems right. Be careful what you think. Psalms 91 and verse 4 Psalms 91 verse 4 says, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. We can only trust when our hearts tell us to trust. So if we trust in the wrong thing, we will end up in death. But if we trust in the, in the word of the Lord, this is what is going to happen to us. God is going to cover us with his feathers. And under his wings, we will trust. His truth and we know that God is truth. In him there is no lie. His truth will be our shield and buckler. When we abide under the shadow of the Almighty, his truth, what he says, his word, will be our defense. We wouldn't have to open our mouth or fight or anything. You know. Then the word of God will come and say, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Our hearts, our minds will change towards what God said and not what we feel, what we see with our naked eye, but what God's word says. Amen? Ephesians 6 and verse 16 talks about the shield of faith. He said, take the shield of faith wherewith you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And sometimes when the problems come so, and sometimes when we get in attack so, it is feel like fiery darts in truth. It is feel like fire. You're getting blaze up. So above all, take the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Remember we say we, in thought, word, and deed we sin, right? So if we replace our thoughts with the word of God, we will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Because when the wicked come to you to say so, 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 and bring trouble, you will say, my God shall supply all my needs. According to his riches and glory, even though it covered empty, my God shall supply all my needs. We know to stand upon the word of God and be certain of what God says. Amen? Hallelujah. And what is a buckler? He said his, his truth shall be our shield and buckler. A buckler is a small shield that is worn on the arm of a, a soldier. A small shield. That is going to defend. It's a defense. Right? So his truth will be our defense. That's what the word of God is saying. And God cannot lie. So how do we prepare our hearts? Jeremiah 17 and verse 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. This is what the Bible says about our heart. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Not just wicked, but desperately wicked. Who can know it? Look at the next verse. The next verse says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. 
even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So when you think you're fooling God, you're not fooling God. You're not fooling nobody. You're not fooling God. God knows. He says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can know it? You can't know your own heart. Sometimes you don't even know your own heart. You could fool your own self sometimes. Because the way you think is not what is real. But the Lord says here, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Amen? So we're talking about preparing the heart. Isaiah 45 and verse 2 talks about a crooked, the crooked part. You only take a crooked part when you don't trust in the Lord. Amen? I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut asunder the bars of iron. The, wicked, the, the crooked, wicked means crooked, desperately wicked, sorry. It was the scripture before. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Wicked means crooked. Wicked means crooked. A man without God is a crooked man. And when I say man, I don't just mean the male gender. I mean all mankind. Um, mankind without God is wicked. Crooked. Because they don't ever do the right thing. They always compromise. They always compromise. They always find a way to do something shady to get things done. Amen? And God is saying he's going to make our path straight. Without a clean heart, we can't have a right spirit. Without a clean heart, we cannot have a right spirit. So the first thing to do to prepare your heart is to have a clean heart. And like I said before, you, don't, you can't take out your heart and wash it and put it back in. So how can we clean our heart? We can clean our heart. Let's look at Psalms 51 and verse 10. Psalm 51 verse 10. And it says, God, create, create a pure heart in me and give me a new spirit that is faithful to you. Have a clean heart. We need a heart that is right with God. Let's look at Mark chapter 7, verse 8 to 20, 18 to 23. Mark chapter 7, verse 18 to 23. It says, don't you understand? Jesus asks, don't you see? Nothing that enters people from the outside can make them unclean. You hear that? He said, nothing that enters a man from the outside can make them clean. It doesn't go into the heart. It goes into the stomach. Right? So then, and then it goes out of the body. In this, in saying this, Jesus was calling all food clean. All food clean. Because you eat food. And things that go into the body of man is through the mouth, through the heart, through the, through the mouth. And it doesn't go to your heart, it goes to your stomach. Right? Let's look at the next verse, verse 20. It says, He went on to say, What comes out of people makes them unclean. So it's not what goes in the heart that makes you um, unclean. It's not what goes in the body. It's what comes out of it. And how, how does something come out? I'm not talking about vomit. I ain't talking about that. Because that's coming from the, the stomach. The heart we're talking about. What comes out of people makes them unclean. The thoughts, what you say with your mouth. What you say, the things you have up here, the things you have here. What you say, the way you think about something, the way you perceive something, the malice you have in your heart. The word of God calls it the, the, um, the, the foxes that spoil the vine. It's envy, jealousy, malice, and pride. Envy, jealousy, malice, and pride. If you read the Bible well, these, they, they say these are the things in the heart abide. A little old um, Sunday school chorus. They root them up and throw them behind. Four little fox that spoil the vine. Envy, jealousy, malice, and pride. These are the four in the heart abide. People not seeing it on the outside until you lash it on them. It's not what goes in the body that makes it unclean. So you could eat pork in front of somebody. You could eat pork. Once it's not offending your brother or sister, according to the Bible, you could eat your pork. It's up to you. You can eat your wild meats. It's up to you. You can't call anything unclean because God is the one that makes it, right? No, I'm not telling you, go and eat black pudding, eh? because that is blood, and the Bible says life is in the blood, so we're not supposed to eat that. Well, we're not going on what we're supposed to and not supposed to eat. But what I'm saying is, it's not what you eat that makes you unclean, but what comes out of your spirit, what is dwelling inside of you. And if you don't put the word of God inside of you to wash and cleanse and purify and change the way that you think, everything that comes out of you will be unclean. Amen? And this, he goes on to say, evil thoughts come up from the inside. From people's hearts. Evil thoughts come from the inside, from people's hearts. So do sexual sins, 
stealing and murder, adultery, greed, hate, and cheating comes from people's hearts too. So do desires that are not pure and wanting what belongs to others. And so do and so do telling lies about others and being proud and being foolish. All these evil things come from inside a person. They make him unclean. So you see, it's not only what I would say, the Bible says it as well. These are the things that make you unclean. The thing you think about, the evil towards the lies, the wanting what somebody else have. All these things, they may seem un little small things, but these small things add up. Amen? You just don't go with somebody, husband, just so go with somebody, wife, just so you sit down and think about it first. You watch the person and well gauge the person and say, mm hmm, me and that person go to good, but the person have a wife. But you want to go down that road. I've heard it said many times that if, um, I, can't, I can't repeat that because we're online. <laughs> Gary, if we, were, if we weren't online, I would have said it, but we can't say it because I'm online. But I've heard it said many times that that peop people will look at somebody else and say that that person is my husband. This time the man has a wife. And they pray for the wife to die so that they could get the husband. Is that a right prayer? What kind of heart is that? That's a murderous heart. That's a murderous evil heart. How can you pray for somebody's wife to die so you could have the husband? You think that somebody wouldn't pray for you to die so they could get him too? If he that good? Come on. We have to think about these things, right? So the first thing we have to do, how to get our heart clean, is to, ha sorry, how to prepare our heart is to have a clean heart. The second thing we have to do is to give daily, give daily over to prayer and the word. Secret, quiet, determined prayer. We have to give ourselves daily to pray and the word. Oh gosh, you're telling me to pray again, boy. Oh gosh, I just pray, you know. You come, you come like them little children who don't want to wash their face when they go to bed. And you're seeing all the grime still on their face and say, but I bed, go and wash your face with some, but I bed, go and wash your face with some, but I bed. It's the same way. Sometimes we tell people, you know, you know, you have to pray, but it's, they become so wary with prayer. They, that they say the prayer quick, 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 with no heart behind it. The book of Psalms 19 says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord. So what we say with our mouth and what we believe inside of us is supposed to match up. It's supposed to align. And remember Sunday we talk about alignment, and alignment means agree. So our mouth and our heart are supposed to agree in order for our prayers to be answered. So we have to give daily over to prayer and the word. Psalms 44, verse 21. 20 and 21. If I have forgotten the name of our God or stretched out our hands to a strange God, if we have forgotten, sorry, the name of our God or stretched out our hands to a strange God. Next verse. Shall not God search this out? For he knows the secret of the heart. God knows the secret of the heart. That's why we have to have secret quiet, determined prayer. God knows what is inside of us. We have to always give over to the word and prayer to keep washing and cleansing. How many of you go three, four days without bathing? You see? Everybody watch me like, what? You just didn't ask that question, right? How many of us go three, four days without bathing? None of us. Because we know how we just feel. Worse yet, how we smell. Right? So if we go <laughs> physically, we can't go without bathing. Why not spiritually keep washing with the word of God? Keep taking that daily bath in the word of God. That daily swim in the word of God. That quiet time in prayer where you hear from God. Not only collective prayer, but your personal prayer that strengthens your heart. That strengthens you, that tells you, I, I believe in God. And what he says about me is what, what is true. Not what I think about myself. Amen? So the first thing we have to have a clean heart. The second thing is to give over daily to pray. Quiet, secret, determined prayer. Amen? Ephesians 6.18 tells us that we have to pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Proverbs 4 and verse 23. I'm not sure if I have that up there. Proverbs 4.23. 
I think that's the same thing as um, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end is death. So we have to be able to pray. We have to be able to keep ourselves in the word of God all the time. Amen? Pray. Keep in communication with God so we would hear and know what God is saying to us. There was a little clip in Sesame Street. Yes, I am going to bring up Sesame Street today. Because I learn a lot from all, all different types of shows. <laughs> but there is a little clip on Sesame Street. And we're talking about prayer here, right? We have to be still. We have to be so determined to listen, to hear when God is speaking to us. It was about this little, um, this elephant who wants to go to the zoo. It was a cartoon and he wants to go to the zoo. So he lost his way to go to the zoo. And he came, and he, he came across this guy sitting on a park bench. So he asked him, hello, sir, can you tell me how to get to the zoo? So the guy was saying, okay, you go down the road. And before he could finish, as soon as he hear go down the road, he'd take off on a speed and go down the road. When he reached at the end of the road, he had to come right back and say, um, after we go down the road, what do we have to do? So he asked him again, how do I get to the, the, the zoo? He said, okay, go down the road and turn left. And as be, before he could finish the directions, he go, the, the elephant take off on a speed and go down the road again. And uh, this happened a couple times well until finally... The guy told him, you have to wait and listen to the whole direction first before you take off running. And after he listened to the entire direction, he was able to find his way back to the zoo. It might seem funny and a little clip for children, but the thing about it is, is that is the same way you have to be in prayer. You don't just run. As soon as you get a little thing, you run with, you run cut neck chicken all over the place. You would not know what to do. You have to sit down. Be still long enough to hear what God is saying to you. To hear the directions clearly. Don't go haphazard. Do a, Z, a, a horse without um, what? What is? It's like a runaway horse. A person without um, zeal or something like that. Zeal without knowledge is like a runaway horse. You might have all the vigor and the, 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 the wanting, the passion to do it. But if you don't have the knowledge in which to do it, you will be like that elephant running right around the place, not knowing where he's going. And I don't think you all want to be like that, right? It have enough trouble in the world to be so crazy with your heart and playing with your heart. Amen? So we're talking about preparing the heart. The first thing we have to do is clean the heart. The second thing we have to do is give over to pray. The third thing we have to do is to keep the fire burning. We have to keep that fire burning. Look, let's look at Leviticus chapter 6 verse 12 to 13. Leviticus chapter 6 verse 12 to 13. It's not there? It's talking about Leviticus 12, 6 verse 12 to 13 talks about Keeping the fire burning in the heart all the time. Keeping the fire alive in the heart. That's what the priest had to do. The priest had to maintain the fire in the altar all the time. And that is what we have to do. What is the fire? The fire of the Holy Spirit. That zeal, that passion we have for serving God. That is the fire we have to keep in us burning all the time. And how do we do that? By having passion for God. By having commitment and being constant. Commitment to read the word of God. Having passion for the things of God. Having passion for God and consistency. Consistency, constancy, I mean, sorry. Constancy is being constant all the time. Without, without, breaking, without breaking the routine. You have to be constant all the time. If a person is coming to church every single time, all the time you come to church, as the door open, you keep, you're coming to church, you're coming to church, you're coming to church, right? And then one day you just didn't, you, something happened, you didn't come. How did you feel? You feel like you missed something. Because the routine was broken. And then the first time is always the hardest. After that one time you say, well, you know, I ain't feeling so good. I ain't going to go to church. And that the enemy, you give the enemy a little foothold. And he, when you give him an inch, he just take a yard. So when you see that happen, the next time around, you go tell you, well, you know, you, the rain set up, you know. You can't go to church. Look at the sky. Look how black it is. If you go to church, you'll get sick and you go, you go end up with COVID and you go this and that and next and the other and one sort of thing and you'll be in quarantine and you're going quite down south already before you go put a spin. Your mind gone so far already. And you say, you see me? I go stay home. And then the third time, it go be even easier than that. And the fourth time, it go be even easier than that. And the voice inside your, your spirit that tells you, go to church, go to church, go to church, read your Bible, pray. That voice will get softer and softer and softer and softer because you're not going to listen to the voice anymore. You would listen to yourself. And then eventually the voice will fade away. And then what happens? You find yourself in a backslidden state. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. 
Amen? So we have to keep the fire burning. Constancy is the quality of being faithful and dependable. We have to have passion for God. We have to be committed to the things of God, to read the word, etc. And we have to be constant. Constancy is the quality of being faithful and dependable. Can people count on you to be faithful and dependable? Or they know you to say, or they would say about you, if he, don't, don't take the word for it, you know, if he tell you to sit down, get up and run. You know, some people say that about people, right? Because you're so, you're so unreliable. Right? You tell them you're coming today and two weeks, three weeks down the line, you still see them. But every time you call them, I'm coming now, I'm right down the road. This time they're still in the house. Like one clip I was looking at on TikTok and the guy was, um, somebody called the guy and say, um, how far are you? He say, I, I'm now pulling into the, um, I'm now coming around the corner there, boy. He said, how you could come around the corner when I call you on your house phone and you answer? You understand? The unreliable. <laughs> it might sound funny, but in, in all seriousness, we, that is what we do. We tell people, I'm coming now, you know. I'm right around the corner. This time you even leave your house yet. You're, 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 accustomed, you're accustomed line. You're unreliable. Do not let that be said about you as a Christian. That person is unreliable. I can't count on that person. They're untrustworthy. I can't rely on them. I can't have confidence in them. Because if I tell them something, I hear it outside. No, do not be that kind of a person. Have the same way you want somebody to deal with you, you deal with them. Right? Don't do for yourself. Don't do for others what you don't want to do. Have done for yourself. Amen? All right, so we see we have to have a clean heart. We have to give over daily to pray. We have to um, pray and read in the word. We have to keep the fire burning. We, and the next thing is don't look back. Don't look back. The Bible talks about people who look back. And one person in particular we could talk about is Lot's wife. Lot's wife. Remember Sunday I told you Lot was a lot of trouble? Well, Lot's wife was worse. She, they were given the command to come out of Sodom and Gomorrah because God was going to destroy it. He let them out. He, Lot, his wife, and his family came out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Everybody else dead in there. Everybody else was burnt up with brimstone and fire. But they were saved. The only thing she had to do was keep forward, keep watching forward, not look back. Don't look back. The word of God, the, the Lord tell them if they look back, you'll become a pillar of salt. And for some reason, she doubted. She think about what, what she was leaving behind. And sometimes that's what we do. When we come out of the age, if we think about all the, or just like Jonah is, we're thinking about the onion, and we think about the garlic, and we think about what we had back when we was in the world. And what we have in Christ, not what we have in Christ now. Because we think that we still need what we left behind. We don't need it. We don't need it. If we needed it, God would never have taken it away from us. Or allowed us to give it up. We don't need it. Amen? So we see, leave the things behind. Don't look back. Lot's wife looked back and she instantly became a pillar of salt. Did you think she went to heaven? Why you think, why you think she didn't go to heaven? Disobedient. She was disobedient. So the bangles and the chain and the nice living and the whatever and whatever, the riotous living was more important to her than following what God said. And she lost her soul because of it. Are you willing to lose your soul? Not at all, right? Right. She may have looked back at that, but what are we looking back at? What are we looking back at? You can't keep going forward. Everybody here who does drive, you have a big windscreen in front of you and a small mirror. The mirror is small because you can't look in the mirror and drive. If you keep looking in the mirror and drive, you'll end up in an accident. Because you can't look backward to go forward. That's impossible. You cannot drive like that, except if you're reversing. But you don't reverse, you go forward. So stop looking back at the things that you left behind or the things that you lose or the things that you have lost. God is more than able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. He is able to do even more, give us more than what we lost. Look at Job. Job lost his farm, he lost his herds, he lost everything. But when we look at the last part of Job, Job get more in his last, his last years than what he had in his, before anything was taken. So sometimes we need to go through the process. Don't look back. Don't start complaining. Don't start grumbling. Don't start saying this. Don't start saying that. The word of God says do all things without murmuring and grumbling. Yes, it's difficult. Eh? 
because you know how we stop. It's difficult to do, but it's not impossible to do. We just know when we're ready to start to grumble. We just they feel it inside of you already. As soon as that feeling comes to want to say something and, and, and just praise God. Drink some water and praise God. If you have something in your mouth, you can't talk. If you have water in your mouth, you can't talk. Drink some water so you go say nothing. Your husband tell you something bad and you're ready to let him have it. Go and drink some water. What happened? I'm just thirsty. Drink the water. It's better. And if you know if you have to drink, swallow the water, you're going to talk. Keep the water in your mouth. Take an next gulp. Sometimes we have to do these things in order to keep peace in the home. Right? Don't look back. The word of God in, nine, in Luke 9.62 talks about if you put your hand to the plow and you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. Putting your hand to the plow means it, you make a decision to serve Christ. And Jesus said unto them, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. When you start the work, because when, when they talk about plow, they're talking about work. You don't put your hand on a plow and stand up to take a picture. A plow is something that you do hard labor with. If you put your hand to start to do something and you look back, you leave it and you look back because you think the work is too hard, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. The Bible says sit down and count the cost first. Count the cost. Count the cost first before you make a decision. Right? So don't look back. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. Let's look at what 2 Timothy 2 4 says. It says, No man that wore it entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. In other words, no man that wore it or fighting in this fight of faith will go and entangle himself again with the yoke of bondage. Right? With the affairs of this life. Any man who goes to war, any soldier that goes to war, has to be single-minded that are going to war. They can't be saying they're going to war and they're studying their mother and father home or their wife and children are left behind because they would not be able to do what they were called to do. So we see that no man that wars entangles himself again with the affairs of life. Right? So if you're going to do, if you're going to work for God, don't tangle up yourself again with the affairs of this life, saying what are going to eat, what are going to wear, what are going to put on. In the book of Matthew, it says, God already knows that you have need of these things. And he is, he is going to supply that need. Right? He already knows that you have need of it. And then he goes on to say, um, the sparrow don't work. You ever see a sparrow take up a, a, a bird, the sparrow bird? You ever see a sparrow take up a, um, a, a hatchet or an axe and go to cut down a tree? It ever, it ever um, work? But yet it feed, it getting food every single day. Because why? The sparrow automatically knows that God is going to provide. It's only, I was talking to my niece and I want to tell him it's only we humans that give trouble, you know. Everything else knows their place. Every animal in this world, everything in this world knows their place. It's just we humans just, just have a crisis identity. Identity crisis, sorry. It's only us, so uh, we humans want to change the way we look, want to change and never satisfied. But you give, you give a doggy food now, he will eat it. You give a doggy food again, the same thing again, he will eat it. He don't tell you that again. We give me that for. I was I was steak and rice. He don't tell you them thing. Whatever is put before him, he eats. So if animals could obey and and be grateful for what they get, why can't we? Why can't we? We have the Bible even refers to going to the ants and taking lessons from the ants, you know. In Proverbs chapter six from verse six, it says, Go to the ants and see what 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 that what they do. They are not lazy. So if ants not lazy and ants is an animal, an uh, insect, why we humans have to want to stay home and be lazy? We have to take note. We don't look back. The Bible says anybody that, that, that put their hand to the plow and turn wrong, look back, they're not fit for the kingdom of God. And to be entangled, as the word of God, as the word says here, no man that word entangles himself. To be entangled means to be preoccupied, to be distracted. To be choked by the things of this world. As in this, the, the parable of the seed and the sower, when the, 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 the so, seed was sown, and as it sprang up, the weeds come and choke the world out of the, um, the, the, the seed that was sown. The, word, the things of this world came and choked the seed that was sown, and it died before it was fully mature. Don't be like that. Don't get distracted. Don't get preoccupied. 
Don't let the things of this world choke you. Don't look back and say things was better then. And things was better before COVID. And things was this and that. And it, or it have, a, it have a, a BC and an AC. Before COVID and after COVID. A BC and an AC. Before COVID, after COVID. And we look at things before, with the BC, before COVID. And it was nice and things was better. And then after COVID, things were dreary and this and that. But all things work together for good to them that love God. To them that are called according to his purpose. And one of the good things I see with COVID, one of the good things I could say about COVID is that everybody had to go back and learn to cook. Because when KFC closed down, and this one closed down, and that one closed down, if you didn't know how to cook, you starve. So even if you're making the dumpling hard, and you're chewing it for 10,000 times before you could swallow it, after a while of making the dumpling because KFC wasn't open, you learn how to do it well. Right? So one of the good things, they are good and they are as bad. Yes, our movements was hindered and stuff like that and whatever. We had to wear the mask and things like that. But look at what happened. The whole world, I, I was telling Apostle, I said the whole world w went on a reset. Everybody went back on a reset. We had to go back to the things we learned from when we were small. Who, who run her gas had to get firewood and cook on the outside? And people who didn't know how to cook had to learn to cook. All them girls with them long nails and, 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 and they, they fancy and all, all of them things had to clip nails and go in the kitchen. Had to learn by force how to wash clothes. Because when they can't pay electricity bill and the current cut, you had to go on, on joking board again. Come on. The things that we were supposed to train our young ladies and men to do, it had to be done in that two years. You, I was praying for more time with Apostle. Will I get more time with Apostle? Because when everything locked down, I was watching him in the face. Be careful what you pray for. Be careful what you pray for. Husbands and wives saying, I wish I had more time with you, honey. And when, when everything locked down, and you see husband and wife watching each other in the face, so at first it was nice, and after a while you start grating on each other's nerves. And then we see domestic violence at a raise, and cuss out in house that was peaceful. So we had to learn to adapt and, and take our eyes out of the tablet for a little bit and focus it back on the family. So you see that things, even though things were difficult during the COVID time, it was God still had a purpose and a plan. It still had a purpose and a plan for everything. It was not total loss. It was not total downfall. Right? It's the way that you perceive it and the way that you look at it. Right? So we're talking again. Don't, go, don't look back. So I'll just recap in here. How to have a prepared heart. The first thing you have to clean the heart. And I wouldn't go down the road and tell you how to clean, right? Because only know how to clean. Everybody's clean house and you don't like to see dust and stuff. The same way, clean your heart. Don't like to see sin here and sin there stick up all over the place. All right, clean your heart. The second thing is to give daily over to prayer and reading of the word. Then you have to keep the fire burning. Then you have to not look back. And finally, you have to believe. You could do all of these things and don't believe nothing. You could read the word of God. Every single time you come to church, if that's the only time you just read the word, when you come to church and see it on the screen, and your Bible home, then you have to blow the dust from it. It's so covered with dust, you can't even recognize the Bible and pass it straight. Because you don't take it up. And it, you know, if you blow it so, you get asthma because of the amount of dust on it. Some people don't read the Bible until they come to church, and sometimes when they come to church, they don't even walk in the Bible because they have the screens up. Now, what would happen if the day, it, a day come and current cut and we have no screens? And that happened already. Where is your word? Where is your sword? A man going into battle don't leave your weapon home. I have it on my phone, but you're on the phone watching the, the, reading the word and a message come and you, you, you get distracted and you're going to read your message. And people thinking you're well reading the word on the phone. Eh? This time you're answering somebody that, uh, that telling you about, come on, let me go online to you and there. Let me go and catch a movie now. In church. No, these, are, these things happen. I see church service going on, and I went, well, that's when we had the, um, the, the room there before we extended, and we had the washroom to the back there, and I needed to go to use the washroom, and I was going down to the washroom, and I was coming back, and a young lady in church, you could swear, this girl did in she Bible. This time she had the Bible open and a book in front of the Bible and reading it. Another one had a phone open in front of the Bible reading it. So you see, you're trying to fool people, but you're not fooling God. You're not fooling God. You could, you could read the word how many times. God, to, God could tell you you are fearfully and wonderfully made, and you still believe that you're ugly. 
And you telling yourself you make a joke and say, well, I'm more fearfully than wonderfully made. You don't believe what the word of God says. You could read how much things. We could look at the scripture every single time we have church. We open with the scripture. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. How many of us actually re believe that? That God says he's not going to fail us and he's not going to forsake us. Or is it just something that we murmur and we say, we, we just repeat. We just repeat with nothing, nothing connecting. Nothing connecting. We must believe the word of God. If we don't believe the word of God, we're wasting time. Everything else would not work. Don't doubt in the darkness what God show you in the light. Don't doubt in the darkness what God show you in the light. When God spoke to your heart at the day of conversion, and he said, I'm going to be with you. Be assured of my love. I will never leave you nor forsake you. God love you so much. He said, the very hairs on your head are all numbered. The hair on your head are all numbered. So when your hair fall out, when you come in your hair and your hair fall out, it's not hair number one or two or three, no. It's here number 45, number 2061, number this and that. God knows which one fall out. Because not all this follow from one spot. So he knows which one, fall, which one came out of your head. Your hair, the hair on your head is numbered. God knows how you was forming your mother's belly more than your mother who carry you. More than the ultrasound could have say when she was pregnant with you. God knows you. He said, before, you, before I formed you, I knew you. And I have ordained you as a prophet to the nations. So I've loved you with an everlasting love. I have graven you on the palm of my hands. You are mine. In the book of Isaiah, it says, when you walk through the waters, you will not drown. If you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Not even the smell of smoke will be on you. Is it because I love you so much, I give places and people for you, just so that I can have you? Do you believe what the word of God says? Do you believe? Our husbands and wives don't tell us that, them kind of words, you know. And even if they tell us them kind of words, it's because they want something. You know when your husband or your wife come to you and talking, honey, you know, what you want? What you want? When they give you a compliment, they watch them kind of crazy because, you know, it, it, the compliment will come. So when it come, uh -huh, what you want? Right? You're kind of iffy about accepting it. The word of God tells you that he love, that, that God loves you. He loves you. He loves you so much that he sent the most precious thing to him to die for you. The most precious, the king of heaven, the, 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 the darling of heaven, as the, the song says, came to die for you. And not just die, but a horrendous debt just to pay your debt. Just to pay for you. You think you're sitting here by accident? No. His spirit called you here. He loves you so much. It have no words to say. If you really want to know how much God loves you, read 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. That's your homework assignment. Read 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. And don't just read it like if you're reading a novel. Pray and ask God, Lord, help me. Open up my understanding. Enlighten my heart with your word. That I will see what you have in store for me. Lord, I want to know of your love. Show me. The word of God says in, in the book of in 1 John 4, 7 and 8, it says, We love. Let us love one another. For God is love. And everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. He that does not love doesn't know God because God is love. God is, God, listen, God is, God make, make, God is love itself. Love personified. That is what God is. It have no other way you could describe it. God is love. You want love. I know some of us lack love in our lives. And we want to be loved. How many of us have this desire to be loved? I mean, big woman, big man. Not only culture. And we have the desire to be loved. The desire for somebody to want to be with us. The desire for communication. The desire for those things. The closeness, that intimacy. Sometimes our husbands, our children, nobody could give it to us but God. What we crave it cannot be filled with this earthly stuff. It's God. It's only God. It's only God. Go before God. Let him fill you and make you whole. A husband could only make you halfway. And sometimes you just be more vexed than anything else. When he, when he finished talking to you, you're more irritated and vexed than anything else. But God doesn't move like that. God could fill you and make you whole. 
make you whole, complete. Wholeness is completeness. He could make you complete. If you are lacking and you feel like you need that something in your life, go to God. Believe what God's word says concerning you. The word of God, all the promises in the word of God is yea and amen. Yes. God says yes, we say amen. I'm not going back like what I did on Sunday, but you all remember Sunday. Right? When God says yes, you say amen. When God says no, you say amen. Your response is supposed to be amen, so be it. No matter what, Lord, I know you have my back. And if I don't get this now, or this is not for me, I know that what you have for me will be the best. God only wants the best for you. He said his will is not, his will is not like our will. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. It's higher than what we could ever think. What we want for ourselves, God wants even more for us. We limit the, way, the things that we, we would have from God by what we think. But God is limitless. He's boundless. He's ageless. It has nothing. He doesn't change. So he wouldn't think about you having this today and tomorrow you change your mind and say, Nash, you know. No. God does not change. His promises to you will always stand. It will always stand. So we see, don't doubt in the darkness what God show you in the light. Let's look at Mark chapter 9 and verse 23. We must believe. We must believe. Jesus said unto them, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to them that believe it. All things are possible. You're thinking that that peace is impossible for you to get? God says, if you believe that I will give you peace, you will have that peace. That peace and the peace that I give is not like what the world gives. It's not fleeting. It doesn't come and go. It's a sustainable peace. It's a peace that passes all understanding. When I tell you I forgive you and I love you, I have forgiven you and I love you. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter how what you face or what you see. I say I love you. I say I want you. And that is what, if God says it, that settles it. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's stand to our feet this evening. Let's stand to our feet as we declare some prayer points here. We just have two prayer points. Did you all understand anything this evening? Did you all get anything from the word this evening? Yes. How to prepare your heart? You have to have a ready heart. Our hearts must be prepared to meet the Lord. We talk about, there is a parable that talks about the ten virgins. Five was wise, five was foolish. Five was wise to have, be prepared Five was wise to be prepared and walk with extra oil. And five was foolish and thinking, well, the bridegroom will come early now and I can make do with what I have. The anointing that I have, I can make do with that. But God tell you, no, you need more. Don't get complacent in your Christian walk. There is always more to know. You don't know everything. And the things that you didn't even know that you wanted to know, God is going to show you. Five years from now, you wouldn't believe where you would be. If you keep going on with God, you don't believe what God will do. You would not know. Tell me something. Five years ago, did you know that you was going to be here? You didn't know you was going to be here, right? Five, two, two years ago, you know you would have be here today? No. You know you would have been so far. And sometimes we feel as if we didn't move. We feel like we didn't move in our Christian walk. Don't get fooled by that. When you go back, when you, when you, when you, Go back to where you were, you think about where you were before, and you see where you are now, you know that God has moved you. God has seen you through so much things that otherwise you would have fainted. Otherwise you would have cussed and gone on bad and you didn't do those things. That's how much God changed you. It doesn't happen instantly and one time, one time, one time. He takes time with everybody and everybody is different. So what he will remove from me in the time and he will remove from me, he wouldn't do that with you because he knows how to deal with you. He knows how to deal with me. Right? So God knows everything. He knows you better than you. He will deal with you. So prepare your heart. Keep your heart prepared. Have a clean heart. If, you know that, if you're not sure whether your heart clean or not, go before God and ask him to clean, cleanse it by his precious blood. Because we can't do it ourselves. Amen? Yeah. Amen? You have to make, you have to believe. The word of God says, without faith it is impossible to, um, to please God. For he that comes to God must believe. You must believe. If you want to learn more about believing and, and why you must believe, read the book of John. Read the book of John. 
All right, there is a, the word of God has everything for everything. Amen. So let's just say declare up, um, some prayer points this evening. First one, repeat after me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. And renew a right spirit within me. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Come on, open your mouth and speak in your own words. Ask God to create in you a clean heart. Take away all the things in you. You know yourselves. Take away the things in you that are hindering you, that are holding you back. Ask him to help you to give it up. Create in me, God, a clean heart, Lord. Renew the right spirit, the kind of spirit that you want, to oh God, the one that will have me faithful to you, Lord. Create in me, O oh God. Lord, make something new in my heart, O oh God. Take out all the things, O oh God, that are hindering, O oh God, all the obstacles, O oh God, all the hurdles, all the hindrances, O oh God, to serving you, Lord, the way that you want me to serve you. Father God, create in me a clean heart. Help me to see only you, O oh God. In everything that I do, everything that I say, O oh God, help, it, help me, O oh God, to think about you first and to put you you first, Lord, before everything else, oh God. Father, oh God, clean me, oh God. Cleanse me, Lord. Cleanse my heart, Lord. Cleanse the way that I think, oh God. Father, change my perception of things, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Oh God, take away the stony heart and replace it with a heart like a flesh like yours. Oh God, take away this stony heart and replace it with a fleshy heart of like yours. Oh God, take away the stony heart, Lord. Do you know what you're saying this, this evening? That stony heart is the heart that is stubborn, you know, a stubborn heart. A heart that is hard, and a stone is hard. Hard. Doesn't change. And you have to break it in order to change its dimensions. You're asking God to take away this heart, this stubborn heart, the set, the heart that is set on doing wrong. Take it away and put in a heart that is moldable, that is that you could you could that the Lord could lead and guide. That is what you're asking God to do this evening. So repeat after me. Oh God, take away this stony heart and replace it with a heart like yours. Oh God, take away this stony heart and replace it with a heart like yours. Come on, open your mouth and give God praise. You tell, you talk to God. Lord, take away the stony heart from me, Lord. Every stubbornness in my life, oh God, that is causing me to stumble, oh God. Lord, every way that I've taught about my brother or sister, oh God, that is not in alignment with your word, oh God, and what you have, oh God, is said about them, Lord. Father God, remove it in the name of Jesus. Every stumbling block, oh God. Father, every rock of offense, oh God. Every offensive heart right now, I give it to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, I cast all my cares upon you because I know that you care for me, oh God. Father, I thank you. Lord. Take away this stony heart, Lord, and replace it, oh God, with a heart like yours, God. A forgiven heart, Lord. A heart that looks on the good and not the bad, oh God. A heart that sees you, oh God, in everything, Lord. Father, replace a stony heart with a heart like yours in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Father, I just want to pray over this congregation, Lord. I ask, God, that you know them, Lord, better than know yourself. And I ask, Lord, that you take control of every thought, oh God. Take control, oh God. Lord, help them to remember, oh God, what was said this evening. Father, I pray, oh God, that you will do a new work, the work that you have started in their lives, oh God, you are able to accomplish it. And Father, I pray, Lord, the seed that was sown tonight in their heart, oh God. Father, I pray, oh God, that they will water it, oh God, and nurture it, oh God, and take care of that plant, oh God, that it will grow into a strong tree of faith, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that every home assignment that they have been given to read the book of John and to read first, second, and third John, oh God, that, Lord, they will honor it, oh God. Father, even as you go to read, Father, show them, Lord, what you will have them to see. Teach them about love, oh God. Teach them about believing in you, oh God. Father, change their heart, oh God. Soften it up, oh God. Soften it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We come against every stony heart right now. We come against every heart of unforgiveness. We come against every heart that is not in alignment with the word of God right now. In the name of Jesus, every thought pattern, everything, oh God, every will, every emotion, oh God, we cast it at your feet right now in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I commit each one of them into your hands because I know, Lord, that you are well able to keep what is committed unto you, O oh God.
And Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for doing it, O oh God. Father, show up and show up in their lives, O oh God. Father, where they are lacking, O oh God, supply that need in the name of Jesus. Father, wheresoever they need comfort, O oh God, Lord, you be the God of all comfort to them, O oh God. Father, where they, where they need the intimacy of that love, O oh God, Father, in the name of Jesus, show up in their lives, O oh God. Remind them how much they are loved, Lord. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you do what only you alone can do in their lives, Lord. Give them a testimony that when testimony time comes, Lord, they will be running up here to say, you have done it for them, Lord. You have done it for them, O oh God. You have done it for them. Change their heart and the way that they think, O oh God. Father, I pray, O oh God, that they will prepare their hearts to meet you, Lord. To prepare their hearts for service, Lord. Prepare their hearts to be soldiers of the cross, Lord. Father, I thank you, O oh God, for this opportunity, O oh God. And I pray, Lord, that, Lord, you take all the honor and all the glory. I pray, O oh God, that you do, O oh God, exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think in their lives right now. Lord, even as we leave here, Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you'll go before them as a consuming fire. Whatever the enemy is waiting with outside there, O oh God, to snatch the word from them, we come against it right now. We nullify every plan of the enemy against their lives right now in the name of Jesus. Father, every accident, incident and everything, oh God, that will want to distract and disrupt them, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we come against it right now. Father, I so can cover everyone here with the blood of Jesus. I say no weapon that is formed against them will ever prosper. And every tongue that rise up in judgment against them, even their own tongue, oh God, Lord, it shall be condemned in the name of Jesus. And Father, we want to thank you, Lord. We, we offer the offering up to you right now in the name of Jesus. And we ask, oh Lord, that you use it, oh God, for the furtherance of your kingdom. And Father, I pray, Lord, that you bless those that give and those that you didn't have to give, oh God, Father, open the windows of heaven, O oh God. Father, help them to get a job. Help them, O oh God, to get something, O oh God, that they will be able to give, Lord, in the, in the future, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord, for all the hands that gave. gave. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. They will pass around with the offering.